This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is the Ramble and we go until midnight tonight. Larry Bubbles Brown is tired. Alex yeah. Bennett is tired. We're both tired. You get it? Maybe we need to reach him. Should we retire? Should we retire? We should retire because we're tired. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're just we're just we're punchy is what we are. Yeah. We, we're, what it is is that when we recorded this, this is like two days after daylight saving time. By the way, it's not daylight savings time. It's daylight saving time. You know that everybody calls it daylight savings. Right. Yeah. yeah daylight. Right. It's daylight savings. No, it's daylight saving. You're only saving it once. Well, so that goes and that goes on twice a year. So your your diurnal clock gets really screwed up, you know. Yes, and we many more ha- accidents right after they change these clocks. We're animals. We have internal clocks. Okay, we do, yeah. and you, you can't screw that up, you know. I bet it causes cancer. How do you like that? It does cause uh, some heart. Pr- there are some physical ailments, including heart problems and. Oh really? Yeah, I didn't know. There's that. been studies to show that. Yeah. Well, there's studies that show anything. Yeah. That's true, but I think when you mess with your sleep, that can really uh, affect your health. Yeah. So, uh, how are you doing, my friend? Uh, I just, I'm, I feel this time change makes me feel like I'm drugged. Yeah, yeah. You got back from where did you say you were, Boise? From Boise. Boise, Idaho. What's it Which like? I've never been to. Okay, what's it, could could you have lived your life without ever having to go there? I could have, but after getting sick of this place, I was thinking maybe I could should, should move there. <laughs> Boys, <laughs> gas is only three eighty five, so. and they're not send, and and guys from uh, Florida and Texas aren't sending uh, uh, immigrants to you. you know? I didn't see a lot of immigrants there, but there are a lot of, uh, I think a lot of tech people have moved there and kind of, there's been a housing boom. You know, these tech people. They ruin everything. They ruin everything. They're like, uh, 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 what's, what, what kind of things infest your town, animals, rats or whatever? They're like a lot of rats that come in j- to your city. They're a plague. They come in. They pay more than they should for houses, raising the prices of houses. They are a, they are a plague. They're a plague in San Francisco. I mean, San Francisco for years never had any of the tech people, really. They had a few, but they didn't have many. Now, the reason being they were all down in Silicon Valley. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't they stay down there? What was the problem? <laughs> Well, I think Twitter moved up here, up there. Twitter, that was one of the big ones. Yeah, that was. Yeah, a couple of other companies moved there, and it, it started to start that move up north. I mean, I think the people at uh, Apple don't live in San Francisco, but if they do, Apple has a bus for them. They have these huge buses that take them down there. They now. take them down to work. Uh, if if you want to live in San Francisco. Why you'd want to live in San Francisco, I have no idea because it's too expensive. You can live in Silicon Valley much cheaper. You know, they didn't. Uh, they didn't really. You know, they didn't, the housing market didn't boom down there because if you needed more homes, they just built them. In San Francisco, you don't have the room. You know, so I mean, it. It. it I. You tell me, San Francisco's been ruined. Yeah. But it's, uh, I think, uh, most of the big cities on the West Coast seem like they're in free fall. Is there a reason for that? I mean, a, a one major reason? Uh, it's the, uh, well, they've, they've made the homeless 
thing worse by making drugs accessible. Mm-hmm. And I think San Francisco is actually thinking about stopping that now. So the huge problem, the homeless problems become huge, and then a lot of the cities have pretty much stopped prosecuting a lot of crimes. So. Mm. Mm. There's a, there's a place in, in Oakland now. They are going to stores in the middle of the night with backhoes <laughs> and ripping the front of the store out to get in and steal stuff. Wow. Oh. Well, here in in New York, uh, supposedly there's a problem, but I never go out, so I don't see it. But there's a problem because we've got so many immigrants that have come here that the city can't can't uh, take the load. Yeah, I saw it. Where where are they putting them? Well, they're putting them in hotels. Is what they're doing. A lot of them, and then they also built this giant tent out on Roosevelt Island that can hold a couple of thousand. And they put beds in there. And it's not really for families. They put the families up in the hotels. Uh, but, I mean, it's just, you know, the, the hotels are in, like, fancy areas. Well, not so fancy anymore. <laughs> you know, but on the other hand, uh, you know, Marjorie says to me, you know, like, oh, we got to do something about these, these, uh, these immigrants. And I go, you, you consider yourself a liberal, right? I said, oh, absolutely. I said, then be a little more forgiving of these people. You know, they're in a bad situation. Uh, first of all, they leave their country because they're afraid of being killed by gangs and everything else, okay? So they then f- go all the way up from their Ecuador or wherever, and they come to the United States for an uncertain future. They don't know if they can even get past the barbed wire uh, at the border. You know, but they do it because they're, they want a better life for their families and for their children. That's the average person. Okay, it's not drug dealers. It's not you know. It, they would like you to think the Republicans say oh, it's drug dealers. You know, no, it's not. Basically, it's families. And then you get here, and they tell you, well, we're sending you to a place, New York City, where you can get better. You can get some jobs. Okay. Um. But that was a lie. And uh, they then put them on these buses, have them sign waivers that they don't even know what they're signing, and they send them to New York. Or they send them to Cape Cod. They send a bunch of people up to Martha's Vineyard. You know? I mean, this goes on and on and on. And I feel sorry for these people because this isn't what they came here for came here to try and, and and by the way when they get to New York they do suddenly look for jobs it's not like they're trying to sponge uh, and they're taking any job they can find but they can't take them why because they don't have a workers permit I mean it, it, it it's a bigger it's a it's a real hell I mean it's not probably the same hell they had say in Guatemala with death squads that were going around killing people, but it, it is pretty terrible, and I feel sorry for them. So I told Marjorie, don't, don't get mad at them. It's not their fault. They're just simply looking for a better life, and if you had some children and you had a family, you'd want to do exactly the same thing. Um, so, you know, it's New York, which thinks of itself as a liberal city, and they were sent here because we're a, what do they call it, a sanctuary city. They figure, oh well, we'll we'll take care of this, you know. No, they're not, you know. It's it's uh, it's terrible. It's just terrible. And oh, it's just overwhelming numbers. You can only take so many. Huh? Well, yeah, you can only. It, there's only so many the city can hold, and and as a result, also, what what is the average uh, rent in San Francisco now? Do you know? It's about three thousand for a one bedroom. Try New York, five thousand. Ooh, five thousand. Really? Miles. Yes. Who can live here? You know, you get a job. How much money do you have to make every year to pay a five thousand dollar rent? Well, that's sixty thousand a year in rent. So. Yeah, and and rent should only be about what a quarter. What is the a quarter? What? Yeah, I'll say you'd be. Yeah, so you have to make $200,000 to live in New York City and, and live in a one-bedroom apartment, by the way. Yeah. What? 
Miami well, mean- San Francisco, they say you should earn you should earn four hundred thousand dollars to buy a house in the Bay Area. Oh boy! You know where I was stupid? I should have bought a house when I was in San Francisco. Yeah, you should have. You'd have made a fortune on it. Well, what happened was is that I always had a theory that uh, you know I'm in radio. And radio is not <laughs> tenuous at best. Tenuous right? at best, right? And it's a it's a transient job until maybe you become a real hit, and then you stay somewhere for several years, which is exactly what happened to me. But when I first got there, I said I'm not buying a home, and I had the money to be able to buy a home. I said I'm not buying a home because, uh, you know, I uh, how how long am I going to? be here you know they could fire me tomorrow and then i gotta move to boise idaho and uh i don't have a home in boise idaho so i never (laughs) bought a home i never bought a home and i was there for what about 11 years something like that i could have actually paid the home off because when i first wanted to buy a home they were like you know seventy five thousand dollars maybe for a really nice home (laughs) yeah for a really nice home now they're millions, and I mean, I could, um, uh, my mother sold her home in Marin County, which she bought for eleven thousand. They bought for eleven thousand dollars. It's up on a hill. It's a two-bedroom home, um, two levels, really nice. You had to walk up uh, ninety-nine stairs to get to the top, uh, but uh, otherwise it was fine. And uh, I, uh, uh, you know, she, but she got rid of it uh, because she, my father died and she just wanted to get out of there and so on. And she sold it for $35,000. Oh, God. So she made a profit (laughs) on that. And I said, Mom, keep the house. I said, in fact, I'll make the payments on it, okay? But keep the house. I was still living in New York at the time. I said, "I'll I'll pay the the whatever the the uh, whatever you pay to payment on a house. What's it called? The note. Note. Whatever. Anyway, I'll pay for it, and you just the mortgage. Stay, mortgage, and you just stay there. No, your uncle Lou says I should get rid of it because they can get a good price, thirty five thousand dollars. So she 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 sells it anyway." And uh, I think the the note was you know it was not expensive it was like thirty five dollars a month or something, <laughs> and and I figured well what the hell you know she was paying the note on the eleven thousand dollars, okay so it was very easy to pay off, and she just she just said nah your uncle Lou says we should sell so they sold it and they got thirty five thousand I said good for you, there was then a boom in Marin County. Okay, and that house went from thirty-five thousand dollars to three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Jesus. And then I think it went to higher than that in years to come. It went over a million. Probably two million now. Yeah. So I mean, Easily. yeah. I mean, so uh, you know, I I said to my mom always, I said you were stupid to sell that. You know, you should have never sold it. Uh, and you get you know so uh, uh, that was that was that was the other way the Schwarzman family screwed up making money <laughs> and me not buy me, me not buying a house you know that wasn't right I should have done that you know I was never good with that and also my business manager Gary said to me you don't want to buy a house he never bought one and I really? said I said why he said. You're not the kind of guy that wants to have a home. You know, you're not the kind of guy that wants to have to, you know, fix the leak in the ceiling. You know, when it happens, you'd well, rather there are a lot of pains in owning a house. You'd but, rather uh, call a super to do it for you. You know, uh, he said you're 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 a, an apartment guy. You're a rental guy. He said you're not an owner. And he, in many ways, he was right. You know. But it, it was wrong so far as investment was concerned. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah. Have, have you ever made major uh, business flubs? 
things you should have done but you didn't do? Uh, let's see. I could have bought. I could have bought a house or a condo in a nice part of Oakland in '87 for thirty-five thousand. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. But I've had uh, I've had friends that have made <laughs> bigger flubs than that. I I know some guy. I know got. Uh, some stock was under a dollar. He bought ten thousand shares, and the thing went up to over three hundred dollars. He had over three hundred million, and then it <laughs> it went back to practically nothing again. So, and they didn't sell. Then I heard a bunch of a bunch of people bought tech stocks out here that made a million dollars, and then wrote it down to twenty thousand. Yeah, a lot of people bought those tech stocks at high prices and had to sell them low when that whole crash happened. But there mm-hmm. was a point at which you could have sold early and done okay. Uh, one of the guys who really did okay, you know Mark Cuban is? Yeah. yeah. Mark Cuban had a partner, and they had this thing called Broadcast.com. And all Broadcast.com was was a site you could go to and listen to radio stations from all over the world. And they just grabbed them and used them. They, I don't think he even got the rights from the radio stations. Well, this thing was a very good success. Also, there were people who were you know, buying space on Broadcast.com and doing programs and stuff like that, kind of a little bit like YouTube is today. And uh, Yahoo saw this as just a bitch in business, okay? So they went in and they offered Mark Cuban and his partner five billion dollars. Yeah, he did become a billionaire. Right? That's where how he became a billionaire. You know, plain and simple. And he uh, many times he said, the easiest money I ever ever had. You know, that was his big deal. If it, that deal hadn't come along, you'd never hear of Mark Cuban. Probably. Right. But who knows? He maybe knew how to make money. He just would be something else. Me, if I started Broadcast.com, Yahoo came along and said, we want to buy it for $5 billion. I'd say, no, I'm going to hold on to it a little yeah. longer. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised you didn't buy a lot of tech stocks back in the when it was starting to pop. Yeah, but if I had, I probably would have lost a lot of money, too. Because I probably wouldn't have sold them. You know, yeah, I think it, Yahoo stock was like in the 1999, got up to $600, and now it's like 30 or something. Do you remember when AOL and Warners merged? I think it was the biggest merger ever. Yes. And it was total flop. <laughs> biggest flop ever. Ever. Uh, I, I love to tell the story. I've told this a couple of times here on, on Gabnet that my friend Shecky... Uh, was walking past the Warner AOL, the AOL Warner building as they were building it, okay? And um, my friend Shecky looks over at his friend and he says, by the time this thing is completed, it won't say AOL Time Warner on it. And he was absolutely right. By the time they finished that building, there was no such thing as AOL anymore. <laughs> or, or if there was, it was a very small company, but it had completely separated from Warner's. Mm-hmm. That was the biggest mistake Warner's ever made, bigger than any flub I ever made with money. And uh, it was it was it was a real it was a real fuck up, major, major. Yeah. Uh, AOL was so big when. The internet first got rolling. But AOL was the worst of them. You know, AOL was so stupid. They were kind of like you. Uh, yeah. In, well, in in that, they kind of refused to go on the internet. They refused to uh, to uh, uh, let people, you know, if they got mail, they had to get it through AOL, not through the uh, internet. Uh, and uh, after a while, AOL said, maybe we're making a mistake here. And so they started getting onto the Internet so people could go and get stuff on the Internet going through AOL. But by then it was too late. Mm-hmm. You know? So they never, you know, 
uh, like you, I think you're wonderful. I was thinking about it just before I was about to call you. You are you are a absolute special special person. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let me explain that. Up until a few <laughs> weeks ago, up until a few weeks ago, this man you're listening to here didn't have dial-up. It didn't have uh, internet uh, service. He had dial-up. Last person I think that I know that had dial-up uh, and for years has had it. And they finally gave him high-speed internet service. Congratulations. <laughs> you're, you're, you, you got, you got the, the regular service, you got the internet service, about the time it will probably go to something else and you'll still be doing internet service. So, you right. know. But I thought that was genius of you. That you just you just so rejected it. I, you're still rejecting it, aren't you? I do. Yeah. I asked him, "How how's it going for you? You're trying to get on Zoom because I would like to have people see you." And uh, you went, "Oh, it, I can't. It didn't. I did it the other day, and it didn't work. It's uh, I couldn't get my picture up. And then when I got my picture up, my your sound was terrible. Sounds, or something. The sound was terrible. And I, you, you, you know, this, uh, and." And then, uh, you know, there are a lot of ways of solving all of this, uh, but I guess the person you were dealing with wasn't, uh, well, you should call me. No, he, he was very patient, but I just, I got very frustrated. And <clears throat> well, there are things we can do that I, 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 I can probably, I'll, I'm patient too, you know, so I could okay, probably. Well, let's do a run through next week. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, I'll have you uh, call me on Zoom because you have to call me. And okay. so, you know, she, I, I don't know if that's the way you did it. You waited for somebody to call you. Yeah, uh, he called me. Yeah, you, but you had to send him an invitation, right? I'm pretty, he either sent one or I sent one. I forget. Maybe you were. Maybe you. you no, know, if he signed on to you, he would have to have your address. See. Oh, okay. And then you would have to send him. A invitation. If he had you call him, which he might have done, then it, it, you have you have to have his invitation or his address or whatever, which is what I would mm-hmm. send you to get in touch with me. So it's either you have to call him or he has to call you. It's not like uh, I find with Skype, you don't have to really ask any permissions and things like that, you know. So okay. anyway. Uh, that's all how it works. It's it's pretty simple. Uh, that's what I that's what I'm told. They always, it's always well, simple. they made it moron proof, and I think you proved you're a moron. Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you're uh, you know, you're you're the ultimate luddite. You know, and I think it's just you don't want to accept it. You know, and you're af- I, you're afraid I, plus of. This, this reminds me. I like doing it over the phone. It's like radio. I like it that way. It, 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 yeah, yeah. Well, it, this is like a phone call, yes. Um, and it, it it works okay. Only I have to pay for this. Uh, no. Yeah, because I it, this is a phone call that you do on Skype. If I use Skype just as regular Skype with video and somebody calls me at my address and blah, 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 they don't charge you. But if you're doing a phone call, they charge you. I mean, it's not much. I think maybe this phone call is ten, but it's ten cents. You know. No, oh, okay. Don't worry, you're not driving me broke yet. Oh, okay, that's okay. good to know. Yeah. Although over the years, it's probably come to at least ten dollars. So <laughs> you know, uh, whatever. But I, I just, I just, I love your, I love your reluctance. But it, it's a little frustrating sometimes because I go, man's no idiot. You know, and he just wants to believe he is. Yeah. You know. Well, yeah. So. Well, it'll. How do you like getting faster uh, service on the internet though? When you get letters and things like that, mail. Well, the email's no different. It's nice that I can, like, if someone puts an attachment, I can actually see it now. So. Well, that's something. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, Before that was that was very frustrating not being able to see attachments or go to links or things. Well, the mail probably comes faster too, you know. 
Plus, you have I guess, to, but dial up on the email is not bad. But what you have to, what you have to remember is, it's always on. You know, you're always on the internet. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, hey, listen, we're running out of time here. Yes, we are. Boy. We need we need a nap. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna both go get a nap. And, yes. uh, uh, and uh, as as I always like to say, we'll see you next week. Yes, we will. Thank you very much, Larry. Thanks, Bye. Alex. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, that's uh, Bubbles, and uh, we'll get back. We'll get to Bubbles again next week. Uh, so. Hi, hello everybody, this is Alex. I think my voice is finally back to where it should be. We had a couple of days there of, 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 of something wrong with the vocal cords, but now I'm okay. Hmm. Okay, so anyway, I'm, uh, I'm still alive in case you just tuned in to see, you know, you never know, one night it'll be like, well, Alex isn't here because he's dead, you know. Uh, I I just hope I have some money coming to me, okay. And it's part of a will, okay. Um, and it's a, not an inconsiderable amount, might I add. But that's not the point I'm making here. What I'm making here is uh, it's in probate, and I don't know how long probate takes, but I'd like to see the money before I drop dead, you know. So far, it's been. Uh, Quite a few months, and I don't know. I, I don't know anything about probate. I don't know anything about that. I don't know much about legal stuff. Period. You know, so it's weird. It's really weird. And then I, I was talking last night about how I'm going back to court uh, with this guy uh, um, who we rented the apartment from originally, uh, who is claiming he's supposed to get money that he already got. So anyway, whatever. But we got to go back to our judge, and you know who the judge is? It's judge in Gorin. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to go. I don't have. We don't have to go. And I don't know if I'm going to go because it's just too much for me to put up with. But I don't know if I'm have to go. And uh, but if I do, I would love to be able to go just to say to to the justice in Gorin, good going with Trump. Okay, good going. You know, and his. Uh, his uh, law clerk uh, is the woman who he got mad at Trump saying things about and gave him a $10,000 fine, okay, and told him to shut up. Uh, I, I, so and I don't know how this guy's going to rule in my case, and I don't care, but he's a pretty good guy all the way around. So I would just love to go to court to be able to say to him, hey, good going, pal. Really enjoyed that thing you did with Trump, you know. But anyway, he's our judge. <laughs> Boy, it's a small world, isn't it? Anyway, let's see here. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I think I want to admit everybody. There are only three people here right now. And uh, uh, let me see here. I will uh, hit my Zoom so that you can see them all there. There's, there's Jeffrey, and uh, there's Josh, and there's Kevin, and there's me. Uh, and uh, how, how you all doing tonight? Oh, wait a minute, are you, are you there? We're here. Oh, I just, <laughs> when you nodded, I didn't. Yellow. Yeah, 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 I like to know that you're okay. How you all doing? Good. Yeah. Anything on your mind tonight? Ooh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. You don't know. Yeah. I'm sure there is. <laughs> well, like what? Well, uh, I found it interesting. They did pass a spending package, I guess, temporarily. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. For a couple of weeks, I think. It wasn't very long, right? Right. Just a few weeks. Right. A uh, month or two, whatever. So, I was a little surprised they got that done, but I assume that after the clown show last time, they decided that they didn't have much choice. But, you know, the one that was more interesting to me was, and I've watched this 
fairly close, and we talked about it, I think, off the show a few mm -hmm. times, mm -hmm. was these military promotions that were held up by Tuberville yeah. were such a joke, and they've been going on for forever. He, his own party was getting sick of it. The Senate was getting tired of it. And then finally, like, after all this time, they finally somehow or another use some powers they have in the Senate and decide that they changed a rule temporarily so that they don't have to vote on these uh, promotions one at a time so that he can't block all of them. Mm -hmm. They can vote on them as a group uh, once um, or in a huge package, so once or twice, and go around him and get these things done because they all agree about how it's it's killing the military and readiness and we're in all these situations and all this and they go on and on and on about it which they're right all of them are mm -hmm. so then they pass the rule and instead of staying around for another day to get it done then they say oh and now we got to go to break <laughs> so they're gonna wait till they come back to do it it's like oh boy you sorry fucks couldn't stay around for one more day like Thanksgiving is next week. You this you got the wrong hey, Thursday. Listen, they shouldn't even be able to go home for Thanksgiving unless right. they get job their job done. You know, we hired them to do a job, do the goddamn job, and if you can't do it before Thursday, then you're working on Thursday. I know. I mean, they couldn't stay around for like one more day and go ahead and pass all these promotions so that this holiday, all these people that have waited for these months can sit down finally on their day off at Thanksgiving mm -hmm. if they get one because many of them are in the military. Well, I mean, they're all in the military, but some of them are, you know, more active than others on particular days mm -hmm. so that they could enjoy it and it would be over with. And No, they're going to make them wait. <laughs> it's like, what, what a bunch of ass clowns who can't cancel what they have to do. I mean, this is what Americans do every day. Yeah. I mean, there are plenty of manufacturing sites that are going to work this Thanksgiving because they're behind. If they were going to, yeah, if yeah. you're going to work, you're going to work this 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 holiday. Right. You're going to work. You know, I used to occasionally work. <laughs> I worked a <laughs> lot of freaking. I holidays. remember working some Labor Days and some other stuff. I mean, it was mostly volunteer, but a couple of our customers at the company that I work for now, big customers, they make a lot of different stuff. None of it is life saving. Uh, you know, I mean, they they don't make like. I know anything that's going to like save your life or anything, but they are behind mm -hmm. and they are going to work Thursday and Friday. Well, I mean, my feeling I mean, is my feeling is these guys, these clowns yeah. don't think they have a boss. Yes. And the fact is they do have a boss because their employer are you and I. I uh, we're all sitting here. Yeah. <laughs> we, it, and and, and uh, we should say hey you didn't get the job done well i'm sorry you're gonna have to stay in washington but they they don't think they owe anybody anything you know and, and yeah that, i i don't get it i mean especially they especially when we're talking about congress okay because the senate has a certain little more sense of dignity and decorum as exemplified by bernie sanders who told uh, that mma fighter you're a senator. Don't act this way. You know? Sit down. You're, you're a senator. Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> act like a senator. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, uh, but you know, the, 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 the Congress, and I've said this before, is kind of a, it's, it's, a, uh, it's an amateur show. Because anybody can get elected right to Congress. Yeah, it is right now, for sure. I mean, I uh, just don't understand how this has been going on for forever, and... They should have done this a long time ago. I don't know why they let him act like the the jerk off that he is for as long as they did. Mm -hmm. But you know, they finally got tired of it. They tried to shame him into it a, mm -hmm. a week or so ago by going on C-SPAN and reading the biographies of all these people and all the stuff they've accomplished and all their medals. And then they made him stand up and object to each one of them, mm -hmm. so that you know, after all that, he would object to this person being promoted. He wouldn't give in. They wouldn't shame it. You know, they couldn't even shame him into it. So they finally changed the rules of the Senate to go around this guy. 
because the other 99 senators are over it. And then as soon as they change the rule so that now all they got to do is have the vote, <clears throat> they said, oh, yeah, it's five o'clock, we got to go. <laughs> like it was a, a fucking department store or whatever. They, they don't, don't want to work. They don't the problem is that, 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 that this is just feeding the the people that sit out there and say people like Trump are not politicians and politicians don't do this. And it just feeds those people because they're doing political things and politician things. This is a perfect politician thing that they're doing. Yeah. And it, it feeds those people who say, well, if I, Trump was in there. He wouldn't do this shit. You know, he'd just keep working. Well, you know, because he looks like he's working doesn't mean he's working, but still it feeds those people that are that are out there you know saying this shit and they think that that's what's going on yeah yeah well i mean it's just it it's just uh, uh ridiculous okay i'll tell you what else is ridiculous something got me the news just came in um last couple of days the big news the story everybody's been running with like crazy is this Sean Combs deal where his ex-girlfriend of nine years, Cassie, has accused him of raping her, of beating her, of abusing her, but she's only, it's a civil suit, it's not a, a criminal charge, okay? And it turns out also that she tried to hold him up for $30 million <laughs> at one point, okay? But all the news people are running this like, look at Sean Combs, look at what a sleaze bag this guy is. Look, look at how he, how he uh, uh, treated somebody, and it's just horrible. And literally, I mean, in a way, she's ruined Sean Combs' life because he's gonna have to come back from this. Now, what the news was tonight, and this thing has been like a big story for two days, on every station, every hour, discussing it, making a big deal out of it, she settled tonight. <laughs> I mean, in two days, she settled. Come on, you know? Now, are all these news networks gonna to apologize to Sean Combs for constantly beating this story into the ground only to have it settled because she got the money she wanted to get. Yeah, she's probably she should be thanking them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was just terrible. And I, just I mean, thought, that's the flavor of the week now is go to go to civil court and instead of a uh, regular court, you can really? get away with it easier. Well, you yes, yes. Civil actions are more easily solved. Yeah, but we don't know what she story. settled for. She could have settled for five cents for all we know. <laughs> You know, because he could have been sitting there going, "I'm worth almost a billion dollars. You want to you want to sue me in the in the civil court? Just come ahead and do it. You'll never see another penny in your life." You know, so yeah. I'm, I'm sure she gave in because, you know, how sincere was she about what he did to her? And by the way, nine years, okay. So she stuck around for a while. Oh yeah, I know what you're going to say, folks. Yeah, she's a woman, and she uh, he 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 was a powerful man, and you give us all that stuff. But you know, the day for that excuse is past. I think. Uh, I don't know if you agree with me, everybody, but you know, I mean, uh, y yes, that there was a time where a man in power like that was guilty of using that power to lord over a woman. But now, you know, there's so many things women can do to get out of that kind of situation that I don't buy it as much as I used to buy it. You know, times have changed a little bit. But that's just me. Uh, anybody disagree with what I just said? Yeah. Oh, really? I yeah. mean, I didn't really hear anything about it. I saw the headline, but, you know, I didn't look into it, but... I don't know why sometimes it is as much time passes, you know, I'm not sure what the, you know, what's behind all that. And I mean, I know that, you know, there, there's evidence out there and uh, victims, advocates and things would say, 
you know, the reasons why, I mean, I, you know, I understand, I'm just saying I, I don't know what her reasons would have been for letting so long pass and then suddenly coming out with it, you know, I mean, it gives well, off the impression of, you know, money, but. She was with Sean Combs, a very wealthy man. <clears throat> she had her, she had an, a, she was a, uh, had a career in music, okay, which he helped produce and so on. And, uh, yeah, she was around him for nine years because it was financially good for her, yeah. you know. But when it was no longer financially good for her or he dumped her or whatever, all of a sudden it's uh, he raped me. Supposedly the rape was, uh, it didn't even say he, she, she charged him with rape but said that it happened after the relationship was over and he came up to her apartment and barged in but didn't say he had sex with her, hmm. you know? But she considered that rape. She called the police? I mean... You know, I don't think so, no. You know, I mean, those things would be more credible if they did. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, and like I said, I don't know why she didn't or sometimes why victims don't. I mean, I've heard the reasons before from, you know, police or investigators, and like I said, victims' rights, advocates, and stuff, I, and a lot I, of them I, makes sense. I, but I, I understand victims. I, yeah, I understand right. it more, I understand it more with, uh, say, a woman uh, who, uh, the man is her only uh, means of support, her husband, right. and, and he right. treats her terribly, and she's afraid to leave because she would be left out in the cold. But Cassie okay. was a star. She had hit records. She had her own bank, okay? Mm -hmm. She had her own money. So what, you know, what, what, what was she, what was she? Yeah, I mean, about? it's, we're certainly a long way from 1955 Mayberry, you know. Well, it <laughs> diminishes, it yeah. diminishes when uh, the women who claim that they had a husband that did beat them or did abuse them and that they couldn't leave because they weren't, didn't have an independent source of income oh, yeah. and whatever i'm right. completely sympathetic to that but this yeah, is a woman I mean, if, who was successful right if the know. uh if the if the accusations are false it certainly ruins things you know because the more of that that happens the worse that it is but i don't know if they're false or not i mean i just you know but it does ruin people's lives and i don't I mean, I don't know what to say about well, it. Well, isn't it strange? You know? Isn't it strange? This is a guy, Sean Combs, who, for instance, went for a long time with Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. Gave her a career in music, which she never had. She was never a singer. And he got her a career in music. Then they broke up, and she went her way, and he went his way. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no yelling and screaming about rape and I was being held prisoner and all of that, you know, from uh, Jennifer Lopez. Mm -hmm. So if this hasn't been the accusations of other people, but only this one person, you would think this kind of abuse would be something constant this person would engage in. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Alan. Uh, news flash. Sean Diddy Combs and Casey reach a settlement. I said that's what. Day I, after. Well, don't you listen to me? No. Did you say it was a settlement? Yes. Oh, I missed that part. I'm sorry. It was the part. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> it was the part. It was the reason <laughs> I, I brought it. My age. It's the yeah. reason I brought it up. You know. Yeah, News I, cloud. News cloud. I, I guess I was in the cloud. Sorry. There's things that are happening a lot more often. I mean, you know, the, I mean, you know, Reds had a guy that pitched for them for two years and was set for a big ticket free agency and named Trevor Bauer and he left them in free agency and went to the Dodgers and signed some two hundred million dollar deal and I don't think he ever pitched a game for him or whatever because right before the season started the same stuff came out about him and then. MLB suspended him for a year, and then they suspended him for another year because they weren't done looking into it yet or whatever. And now his suspension is gone, but he paid the woman some money, but now he can't get anyone to sign him. And um, I think L.A. might have voided the contract because, you know, they had the right. I mean, it, yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, but my so, question is, my question is, 
and, and this has been something that has always bothered me as a male, okay, is that this, these accu- all it has to be is an accusation. And the guy doesn't have a job anymore. Right. It, accusation is not truth. Accusation is simply an accusation. And an accusation can come from the weirdest of sources. I mean, I, I keep, I always say, I always kept thinking about, is there anybody that could accuse me of anything? And then I said, well, probably not. I don't think so. But I have known and gone out occasionally with a few really crazy women <laughs> who in this atmosphere might take the opportunity to say, oh, Alex Bennett, you know, raped me or did whatever, you know. And then I have to suddenly defend myself without even being found guilty of anything. And I think you want to talk about, you know, females have it rough and so on. I think males have it very rough today because if accused of something like this, they have no defense. They're just automatically considered guilty. And even if the woman says, oh, he didn't do it, and really I was wrong in saying this and all of that, forever they're going to look at that guy like he did it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it, it, and I'm not completely up on it, but I mean, it, it ruined this guy's career, Trevor Bauer, you know, I mean, like I said, he was, he was the top free agent, basically, of the offseason, and he signed this big deal, and mm-hmm. then he basically never played again, and I'm pretty sure the accusations against him were dated. They were several years, at least, if I remember right. I mean, I, you know, they weren't like, it wasn't from like, he did this last week or last month. It was, they were five, six, seven years ago, I think. Um, and if I'm wrong, you know, then I'm wrong. I'm not trying to. Well, I think what you're saying, what you're, what, you're, what, you're, care, what you're saying here is that he may have been accused of something that in its day when he supposedly did it, that was not particularly frowned upon. Well, I mean, some of the stuff he was accused of was pretty bad, but it was just, I, I don't know. He, he just, Nothing ever was said, and then he was super duper rich, and then it was said. You know, it was just yeah, it's yeah. Well, just well odd. All, that's all. All I'm saying is, is that he it, he shouldn't have had to suffer like that until it was proven in a court of law that he did what they said he did. You know, I mean, right. I, I, but it, the woman is always to be believed over the man. That's for damn sure. Now, well, that's the general consensus now and I'm not yeah. being I'm not being a sexist here I'm all for a woman getting her just desserts when somebody has raped her has beaten her has yeah. done done any amount of things to her I, I but at the same time I don't want her just to be able to say it it has to be proven in a court of law otherwise why are you depriving this man of his income based on because <clears throat> there are people who will go into court and lie you know so, I mean, things have, should have to be proven, and it's getting to the point where they, it just doesn't. Look at uh, Kevin Spacey, good example. Every trial he has had, about whether it was this trial in England, which they thought was a slam dunk, whether it was the trial, I think, up here in Connecticut, the one here in New York, they were either suspended or he was found not guilty. He has never been found guilty. Tell me the last movie Kevin Spacey's made. It's been a while. Do you think he'll ever be able to make one again? Probably not. They don't even really show that many of his old ones anymore. Yeah. Occasionally I see one, and I'm surprised, actually. And he has not been found guilty of anything. Okay? Even in the British trial, I think uh, Elton John testified in his behalf saying that in one occasion where he was accused of raping some guy or something because it was a gay thing, uh, that he he was at a party that Elton John was holding. Or either that or it was supposed to have happened at a party that Elton John was holding, and Elton said he never showed up, you know. But yet the man's life is completely ruined on insinuations. Now, I understand he's not a very well-liked guy, you know, he's kind of a creep. But nevertheless, being a creep is not being guilty of anything. Just being a creep. Yeah. You know. 
<laughs> but but it, it's just that I, I just think we, we are a little too loose with the accusations today. Yeah. Um, and there's some guys they do find guilty. Who's that guy? Uh, what's his name? Uh, you know, Donald Trump? Trump? No, 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 no. The, the, the other musician, the other singer, big singer, and he, he finally was found guilty of a lot of stuff. Of, of tra trafficking women and things like that, you know. Oh yeah. You know who yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, you know he. I'm sure. Uh, you know he was found guilty in a, in a court of law. So now he, we have to assume <laughs> his guilt. You know. So. Yeah. Whatever. The rapper, or whatever. Yeah, I don't know what his the name. The rap, whatever. I don't care. I never followed his music yeah, anyway. His right. I mean, I can't remember his name either, but. Yeah. yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's, uh, it's kind of weird how it's selective, too, you know, because you went from, you know, all these accusations with, you know, Bill Clinton, and he can't be, you know, the president of the United States, you know, because it's immoral, and then, you know, the far end, now you have Trump, and people still don't even want to talk about that, you know, so, it's uh, especially strange and you know it was very hypocritical of the christian community for sure you know of which i remember a lot of because you know i was i don't want to say connected to that but i mean i came from a family that had a lot of that background and i mean i was around a lot of hearing about that when i was younger bill clinton mm -hmm. and all that and those very same people now are you know were a lot of trump supporters so yep not really sure where they got their logic from but you know so i mean it's not logic it's just just they're not doing the right thing and i think a lot of them know it but they don't care so yeah i mean it's it's so selective i mean i'm not sure how i'm not sure how he gets away with certain stuff like that but you know i mean the uh, i mean people certainly are not allowed to say what they think now for sure <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's literally almost a crime now to tell people what you actually have an opinion about because you have to worry that it'll come at cost to you personally. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about just regular people. Well, I mean... I mean, we, it, it, we've said before that I will tell you or Patrick will tell you or whatever certain things on Saturday night that I will not say here Right. <laughs> here that it will piss someone off enough that they will find out where I work and write that company a letter. And that's why I haven't told anyone where I work now because you don't want it to get back to them. You know, you know. I mean, yeah, I mean that's all. T I mean, you know. Well, you also have to be careful about what you're saying here. I'll tell you, um, um, uh, Rob Alfano. Yeah. Uh, quit calling the show for that reason is that he went to work for a major company. And he didn't want anything he said on the program to come back to him, even though he didn't say anything terrible. But, you know, we live in a day and age where you but can... that's so in interpretive now, you know? What's, what's not terrible to all of us can be terrible to one person. And then they make a big deal about it. And a company or whatever, well, you know, we don't really want the trouble. Well, just I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, <laughs> people, are, people are getting in trouble for being pro-Palestinian. Right. And, and there's nothing wrong with being pro-Palestinian. These people have been put upon for years now. Uh, and, and you, it, 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 you know, I believe in a two-state uh, two solution, you know, and so on. Yeah. Right. But I've always been pro-Palestinian, not that I'm anti-Israel. -Is I'm just pro-Palestinian as well because I think they have a right to have a homeland. And, uh, but if you say that today, they'll say, oh, you're anti-Semitic. You know, no, no, you're not. No, you're right. not. I mean, not at all. Being pro-Palestinian is not being anti-Semitic. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's the point is people are are entitled to or at least should be in my opinion to have really whatever opinion as you know as their if it is their opinion and their their well, true thoughts as long as their opinion doesn't embrace a certain amount of racism right you know now, in other words I was getting that was you know it is not you know i mean i guess they're allowed to hold it in their head but i'm just saying you know nothing that 
leads to action like genocide and things like that. But I'm just saying, but, you know, there is probably not any, no one's right about certain things like that, and no one's wrong. Those things involve a lot of elements and complications. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not going to get solved if as soon as someone says something, you know, the other side just throws their hands up and says, oh, I can't work with this guy. You know, he has, you know, he's a racist or, you know, whatever, you know, and that's what we get a lot of nowadays. Is people are only willing to accept your point of view as long as it 100% matches their point of view. Right. But, but I, it's just you know? that there are people having to suffer because of their opinion. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, very few people are suffering because they're pro, pro uh, Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are a lot of people being put upon because they're pro uh, Palestinian, and I've been always I've always been pro-Palestinian because if if Jews of which I am of that that ilk, okay, want to have a homeland, so do these people, and they deserve to have it, you know. And uh, I think it's terrible that over the years we've never done anything to help them get it, and and um, uh, so I've always been pro-Palestinian. I'm not pro Hamas. They're terrible. They're horrible. They're ghastly. Okay, but they're not. It, it, it's it, 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 you know the people. They're not even Gazan. You know the people in Gaza are not are not the uh, are not Hamas. And if you say, oh well, they they elected them into office. They elected them into office. I think it was what ten years ago, something like that. And that's when they took over oh, the six or eight or something like that. Yeah, but they took over the country is what they did. And then if you tried to go up against them, you were in trouble. Okay, so I mean they've been living under the yoke of Hamas for all that time. And yeah, when, I, I mean I don't know that I would put it quite in that realm, but I mean. I also don't see any of them coming out now. Uh, I mean I, I believe that if that were completely true then there would be no other opportunity like the present to then remove Hamas from their midst and all the Palestinian people would have to do is run out to the IDF and say Hamas is right over there well Go get them. yeah but you have and to under, you, you have to understand you have to understand that they don't feel they could do that with Israel they don't feel that they would go to Israel and Israel would be... And the reason that they don't feel that way is because they don't like Israelis simply because they are Jewish. So No, no, no. They're anti-Jewish. No, no. I, 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 dis I disagree with you on that, Josh. Uh, they, they, it, it, I've never heard any of them saying we hate Jews. They say we hate Israelis. You know, their fight is with the Israelis. Israeli is different than being a Jew. It, it, it is most Israelis are Jews, but most Jews are not Israelis. Okay, and and I don't be, know that I well agree. well no, but you see, I've always been bothered by that as a Jew. I knew that one day, the um, uh, what do you call it, the hens or whatever would come home to roost because of this uh, thing called Israel, which was a, to begin with. It was um, associated and attached to Zionism. It is a Zionist country. Okay, that is their philosophy. I don't happen to be a Zionist. I don't happen to believe in in Zionism. I don't happen to believe in the politics of Zion. However, uh, what the problem I saw was that someday this country, which was a political entity, would do something that was abominable. <laughs> And that I, as a Jew, would get accused of it. Hey, what are your people doing? Blah, 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 blah. And it's happened. It's come home to roost because they, whatever actions they're taking in, in Gaza, which I consider genocidal, many of the things they're doing, uh, is coming home to roost. And people look at me and go, you're Jewish, right? You're, 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 you're for the genocide that's going on in Gaza. And I go, no. Don't associate me with it. And I am upset that that country tries to associate me with, with this genocide that's going on there. Hmm. Okay? Um, so you're, you're pro-Palestinian, but not pro-Israel. No, I'm, I, I, I'm, I am not pro-Zionism. 
Okay, I'm, I, I'd be pro Israel. I'd be pro. I, I can't. I'm not anti-Israel because I, I, Israel has uh, has been given the right to exist. Okay, but in that existence, it has done nothing to make life easy for the Palestinians. You know, and that was their homeland before the before the uh, you know the Zionists ever got there. Except, for, except for you don't see Israelis daily walking in with human bombs and stuff like them, like the Palestinians do. No, Palestinian again, Palestinians are not in and of themselves. Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I would say ninety nine percent of them are probably not terrorists. Yeah, that, right. Like okay, so that doesn't okay. that doesn't <clears throat> say they they in general are terrorists. But they, but ninety nine percent of of Israelis are not terrorists either. Listen, most people they become look, victims when somebody blows themselves up. Listen, most in a most center. people, whether they're Israelis mm. or whether they're Gazans or whether they're Palestinians, really just want to live a quiet, good life with their families and and friends and things like that. And this has put a big pause on that. You know. Wow. I don't know. I, I, the Palestinians for years have talked. But as a Jew, I, I'm just upset that my name is associated with it. Okay, well, you know, uh, and, and certainly, you want to ask me about Hamas? That they are terrible. They are, um, I think, uh, as abominable as a group can possibly be. Hmm. Uh, and what they did and the action they took was horrible. But so, you don't you don't respond to that with a similar action, you know. So why why don't the Palestinians get rid of Hamas? Well, because they uh, the Hamas has the guns, Hamas has the force. But, but, I, I'm, but I'm see, sorry, that doesn't I, make I sense. Hmm? I, I I mean the area is occupied with a force that could, if given the opportunity, that would put a bullet in every single one of them's head. And they're not pointing them out. But you're not I'm but, telling you yeah, that but, but, if yeah. if if the United States of America or the Israelis had flown a Black Hawk helicopter to this hospital in question and tried to land on the roof and deliver supplies, mm -hmm. it'd have been shot out of the sky with a rocket. People would have ran to the helicopter drug the bodies of the pilots and the crew out and drug them through the streets like Somalia, and those people would have been Palestinians. Yep. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's not I, much I, different I, than I, that I, situation. I, it's not much different than Afghanistan, where some people in Afghanistan said the Taliban is right over there. Mm -hmm. I hate them. That is where they live. I will help you kill them. But a pretty good majority, as we've seen, because they took power right back after we left, weren't willing to do a damn thing about it. Do you find that it's a, an, a, an accurate response to what went on uh, on, what was it, on the 9th um, in Israel? An accurate response to the, the killing of, of 1,200 Israelis by killing over 10,000 Gazans? Well, I don't know if they've killed over 10,000 Gazans. The yes. Hamas Health Ministry says that. I would be skeptical of that to begin with. Well, all I know but, is I see pictures of premature babies who haven't got an incubator who are dying on a table. Again, and if the Israelis drove in in a convoy and said, here's a big generator and here's all the equipment, we're going to deliver it to this hospital in the name of peace and prosperity, They'd have been killed in the act of doing. Let so. me tell you something. So what are they supposed to do? Let me tell you something. The thing that has always made me proud to be a Jew is because we always have a certain philosophy about life and about the way you treat other human beings. Uh, if anybody, if any group of people have come to help other people, it's been Jews. Who who has helped the? Uh, the, the racial issues in this country. It's been Jews supplying money and, and, and uh, um, uh, lawyers and everything else to make sure that blacks were treated right in this country. I mean, who was like one of the biggest supporters of the NAACP, the, uh, the what do you call it, the ACLU, things like that, Jews. And I believe in that because 
There's a term we have uh, called uh, uh, being a, a mensch, uh, which is just being a decent person. And that's, uh, you know, I've always liked the way my people were. Uh, uh, they, uh, yes, there were some bad ones, okay. Um, I, don't know. I know some landlords you can't really love, you know. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I, uh, I, I, let me ask Jeff, do you, don't you feel that way? The Jews have always been very good about things and good in the I, way. I agree with you. Yeah, and, and we take great pride in that. And what's going on with Israel now and the way they're handling this situation in Gaza flies in the face of all of that. And mm -hmm. that's, that's why I'm upset by it. I disagree there. Why? Why? Because it, you, you can't blame, you can't say that because we've been good to black people. No, I'm not saying, I'm not saying being good to black people. I gave that as an example. It, okay, the, well, Jews have always been great, had great pride in being what we call being a mensch. You know, okay. okay. Well, but and, and this is not I, even I, even even bec even though they were attacked on the seventh, and they were they were they came over the fence and started doing exactly what you're talking about them doing. You know what the Palestinians are, are being done to now. They did to them unprovoked. Listen, I'm you know what I mean. What, that's 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 all I'm saying is that there's what, a comparison what, there that you're. It seems that it's only one sided comparison. Yep. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the the Israelis are very nice people, and they're they're tolerant and they're helpful, but they were attacked, unprovoked attacked, and <laughs> are they supposed to just say, "Oh, well, you know, sorry, that's okay, yeah, we're, but, we're but, sorry"? But you, you know? don't uh, you don't you don't respond with inappropriate force. You, you but they did sit back for almost a month, doing nothing and waiting for people to get out of the way. As far as I could tell, I, I didn't see anybody getting out of the way. No, they didn't. They and, stuck and, around and they no, said part, they no, couldn't part, go anywhere. No, part and of all the, this other their, stuff. their attitude was, "This is my home. I'm not leaving it." And then there you go with their their the the Palestinians were helping Hamas or no? I don't think they were helping Hamas by doing well. That. They weren't I, hurting I think, them. I, th I think at this point. There probably isn't a Gazan who wants to support Hamas because Hamas created this situation they're in right, right now. Right, right. That's, that's the point. And that, 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 that's where I'm confused of the whole situation because yeah. they're not, as Josh says, pointing these guys out, which they should be, in, in my opinion. And they're not helping well, remember, the cause for yeah. peace in their own country. But remember something their very state, important whatever. here, which we're forgetting for a moment, and that is that uh, every time you do something like this, you have to be careful with your re response because what it does is it creates anti-Israel sentiment. In other words, the, the, right. let's talk about the kid who's like five years old right now. And he's seeing all this going on. What's going to be his attitude about Israel? Oh, I, I get that. You know, and and, and that's, and, that's and, and you absolutely normal. But you don't but, want that. You don't want that. You don't want that to be crazy. Wouldn't it be better if they were sitting back going, "There's a bunch over there. There's a tunnel over there. There's a guy over there. Take him out. We want him out of there. We want our country back as well." You know, aren't they? Isn't it better that they say that? And say we're going to help well, you guys get it, it's very this place easy, up. It's very easy for us. To, it's very easy for us to say from here. I, I understand that because and that's, where, people, that's where I have a problem with the whole situation all, down there. They're they're all those people are all, all afraid. Out there, if, they, if, they, if, if they pointed, I'm with Kevin, wait a minute. Let me know. let me finish what I was saying. Okay, what happens is they're afraid of pointing those people out because if they do, they may be dead themselves. Well, see, you that's. Know. And there again, there's another point. Why can't you point them out and then well, step over the side and go, I want help from you. You'll help me. Go over to that side and say, okay, there's more over there. Guess what? They're going to get help because the Israelis are good people. They're going to help them. I, I, no? I think you're overestimating. I mean, the, the, the problem is even after the Israelis go into a hospital and drag out a cache of weapons, and provide proof that it was being used as a command center, CNN will still go to a doctor on the cell phone inside the hospital saying, oh, that, that's not true. The Israelis made right. that up. Right. 
And 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 Come to on, your man. point. You there. And to your point, Don't did want I? Want it to be true? Well, well, could, no, see, wait, wait a minute. It. Could it didn't be? Didn't I see just on the other day? I'm sorry, I didn't yeah. mean to interrupt, but yeah, go I ahead. want to keep go this ahead. thought. Didn't they? Didn't I see on CNN the other day the Israelis bringing in incubators for those hospitals? Yes. Okay, yeah. so there, you, there's your point right there, Alex. They're yeah. helping. But no, They're but, bringing but, in this but, stuff right, in the but, middle of a fucking it, war. A little bit too much, too late. Because the reason well, they, doing the it. reason they had to bring in those incubators because there weren't any left because they bombed the the right. The, the, so the hospital. bring them in. It's being used as a command center for the terrorist organization. They're fighting. Well, how, the they, they, that there has there been nothing, said, Josh. There's been nothing. There's been nothing that has. There's been nothing that has proven that they were um, um, uh, doing that. That I that, saw a, a huge cache of yeah, weapons yeah. lined up outside and, and, the And, and what, what's to say the Israelis didn't bring those in and plant them there? There you go. If well, that's what a, you believe, then I mean, that's no, all I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not going to say that, that that it isn't true that those were real and whatever. But we're at a point now where we can't believe anybody. Right, exactly. I don't well, know. Sometimes you gotta another part. You gotta make your own decision. Well right. I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make my decision because I'm saying I'm a Jew and I'm for Israel and blah 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 blah. I all I'm for is human beings being treated with the respect they deserve and, and the preservation of their human life. And that's the only thing right. I care about. I I don't care about. I don't think anybody here is disagreeing with that. And I don't know. I don't know that those 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 uh, 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 what do you call it? The implements of war weren't planted behind the CT scan machine or whatever the MRI um, by the Israelis. They could have very well been, or maybe they weren't. I mean, but what I but in this in this fog of this war, I don't know that I can come to any decision. I I don't know. I mean, the American government supports that position. And I find it hard to believe that with where he's at and who he is, that Joe Biden would go on television and definitively say that that information is true, knowing that if he got caught in a lie, he has he has backed off. He is kind he is kind of backed off of that a little bit. You know, he's, so he's, I don't he's modified know it. That I, I mean, he's modified it. It was a command center. I mean, if it wasn't, then it wasn't. But it it was. And like I said, if if the Israelis had blasted on a bullhorn that we're headed over with a Chinook and we're going to land on the roof and you're going to get everything you wanted and ten times more, they'd have shot the helicopter out of the sky. They'd have drugged the bodies of the crew around town and hung them from telephone poles. And who would have been doing that? It wouldn't have just been the Hamas fighters with all the Palestinian people standing around with their hands up saying, we don't support. It would have been the Palestinians and the Hamas. You know, earlier we were talking about wives who who get beaten by their husbands and intimidated by their husbands. I don't know that the relationship of the people in Gaza to Hamas is much different than that. I I don't agree, but... Yeah, I don't agree. I don't know where you make that conclusion. Well, if yeah, you yeah. truly this is if you're then if you're a woman and you're beaten by your husband and the police blow open the door one day and say we're here we're the police and we're here to help and you say I don't know what the fuck you're talking about I was Lady, just going to say the problem. same thing Well you could say that cuz I've been in that situation Yeah but it, it, yeah. that 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 doesn't uh, that doesn't change the situation because this oh. is not busting down the door. Well, uh, the Israelis all, all are there all, in force and will bring forth. All I'm saying is is that I think all of this could have been handled much better by Israel. Netanyahu is one of the biggest asshole jerks in the world. I okay, he's worthless. And, yeah. and as a matter of fact, they, 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 they say his, oh. his days are numbered in Israel because just, he knew that he had gotten word that this thing was coming. And he did nothing about it. Well, I'm not a supporter of his, for sure. And yeah, what, the, and, and it is that suggested that the reason he didn't do anything about it was that he was on the ropes in Israel because of oh, his stand no. about the Supreme He's Court. He's a terrible person. They and that be. he allowed this to happen so he would then be able to maintain power in Israel. I mean, again, I don't want to go, I wouldn't go so far as that stuff, but... I, I don't trust him any I mean, f- further than I, I can spit. Not, no, he's not a good... 
leader and he's not a very good person for sure right. i mean i i'm in no favor of him he should be out this minute if you ask me i mean uh, you know and he's I equal know to trump how that works there how and they, perhaps they, that was a reason why they did attack who one of the other reasons you know yeah. maybe they took that as an advantage, an what? advantage. But I, mean, I just i mean but militarily if it, militarily it is proven that the way you end a war is to not only that you eliminate the enemy's ability to wage right. war and you break their spirit to even want to think about waging war it is no different than the reason that Sherman burned most of the South mm -hmm. because people got tired of it and said, we, we were, were tired of dealing with it. We're going to eliminate their ability to wage war and we will break their spirit from ever mm -hmm. thinking about waging war. And women and children begged the Union Army not to burn their homes and businesses and foodstuffs. And the Union Army said, you started this war sorry about your luck if you would have not supported the people that you did you wouldn't be in this predicament mm -hmm. you were warned several <laughs> times the war's been going on for three years three and a half years been going You're on longer than in. that longer than With that. a fucking torch to her you know <laughs> it's been going on longer than that i, I, I think mean, israel but, gave, but how many how many I, I think how, israel how many gave think, the Palestinians, yeah. how many people here think that my statements I was being pro Hamas. Am I? Well no, I wouldn't say that. Okay, uh -uh. good, because I'm not. And I don't no. want anybody who's listening to get that uh, idea. That, that's I'm, a different I'm speaking yeah. I'm speaking as a Jew who is upset by a country who uses my name as the Jewish state. They even put my Star of David on their flag and which goes on the front of a tank as they go into war, which I don't approve of. Okay. You know, because they have misappropriated my 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 religion, and and you know, people often often said to me, "Well, are you is being Jewish a religion or is it a race?" It's both, okay. And I'm very proud to be a Jew, and I've always been very proud to be a Jew. And if anybody has faced anti-Semitism in his lifetime, in this group here, it was me, okay. Growing up in an all Italian neighborhood in San Francisco. Where I walked down the street and was go, oh, there goes that dirty Jew, you know. And yet, do you think I hate all Italians for it? No, you know. I, I, I. I but the fact was that I've, I've faced anti-Semitism and everything else, and I'm proud to be a Jew, and I've never denied it. And if somebody says, "Are you Jewish?" I will look them right in the face and say, "Absolutely." Well, yeah. the thing that I see is you're looking at this from a human rights perspective rather than what it is well doesn't and, it come and, down? and that's and that's perfectly fine that's perfectly fine but mm -hmm. uh is it reality i don't know you know that that's the I problem agree with and, what you and, just said eric well, because for the during the first day of that thing happened there was what forty thousand kids and old fathers who got killed Forty thousand? Four thousand. Four thousand? No. Four thousand? No, it was twelve hundred. Maybe fourteen hundred. Fourteen hundred, yeah. Fourteen. Yeah. Those people who were at home. Yeah. You know, who yeah. Were at, at home at, at work. A, at a music but they were festival. At a, yeah, no, look, watching, look, look. Watching you, the you, music. But you see, you don't have to make that argument, Jeff, because I agree with you a hundred percent. You know. I mean, nobody can uh, can abide by well, that. But responding to that, well, you respond to is that. It's not is a, a, a Jewish response. It's well, a, you it's you know they say Jew, uh, you know um, uh, uh, Israel has the right to defend itself. Absolutely, within its own borders, shore up those borders. Make sure nobody comes over those borders from Gaza, and don't yeah, have, don't, let that, don't let that don't let that happen, especially when you knew it was going to happen. Well, they, regardless of what you think, who was, knew it or didn't know it, they ran over the line from one country to the other. Mm -hmm. And once you jump over the line, you're... There's consequences. Yeah. Yeah. It, you go it, over there with a bunch of guns to it, decide any person that they can kill. Israel gave 
the Palestinians 30 days before they invaded. Kevin brought this up. It's true. And because they didn't want to leave their houses, that's their choice. They knew what was coming towards them. Not exactly, but they knew that Israel was going to invade. And they didn't want to go. That's their choice. Israel has the right to defend themselves. If Mexico invaded the southern part of this country with missiles and stuff, you think, and, and they kill 600 people on our side, do you think that we're only going to go kill 600 people you on know, their you, side? You know, what you're doing no. is you're creating a scenario that doesn't exist to say, what if it happened? It, it, we don't know. It did it, happen. It, the Trade Center. Yeah, it did yeah. happen here. We had the Trade Center. Yeah, right. absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but we didn't know where to, where, who to go get. For yeah, a while we didn't know where there. to go because they didn't actually cross a border, but we had to go dig up and find out where to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even that was a shit show. You know, I mean, I, I, I felt that, uh, you know, the response that we had to 9 11 on the part of Bush was inappropriate because what he did is he went after Saddam Hussein, who didn't have anything to do with the World Trade Center. You know, so I mean that was an inappropriate response as well. Uh, I, I, granted, I mean I think that we had the right to go over and try and find Osama bin Laden in the hills of Tora Bora and blow every cave out that we could possibly find. You know, because that was where they were. Uh, but uh, that was an entirely different situation too. This is on an, in and of itself its own situation and certainly not a not a nice one you're not one that any of us can uh conscience and, no, I, and I don't i don't think you support the terrorist organizations so no, no right. absolutely not absolutely you're, not. you're looking at it from a human rights perspective which the, is nothing wrong with it at yeah. the end of the day i mean i don't i'm not a huge israeli supporter most of the time either they do tend to overreact mm -hmm. we're probably not even really that far apart I just don't happen to believe the Palestinians are as innocent as some people. Oh, I'm not saying there aren't Palestinians who absolutely hate Israel. There are some uh, people acting like there's a Palestinian Holocaust going on right now, and I'm just like. But uh, you know, I, there are many reasons so why Palestinians that. have a, a I'm, I won't say a right, but a reason to hate the Israelis. It's been blistering for years. They're, they they, they, they teach it in their schools. You know, I'm just saying there's a story in the Washington Post today about Osama's bin Laden's letter to America. Oh, yeah. Oh, that. That, Floating yeah. around and people are starting to take it. Well, you can do whatever you want and I'll still pour one out for my dead homie on Osama bin Laden. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. No. You know, I mean... Well, take uh, a second look at it. Go ahead. And who found that letter anyway? Uh, you know? It's been I out mean, there, you know, I think for a while it just got yeah. dug back up or something. Kevin, you sent me something? Yeah, it's it kind of late now. Came in on my watch. Just came out. A box on my of watch. dried bagels with, uh, with uh, no. pork in them. Okay, what I'm going to try tonight is I'm going to try playing the music from another source. Tell me if you hear it, okay? Do you hear the theme? You don't hear it. No. You see? Oh, well, the reason for that is, uh, is obvious then. It's uh, something that uh, Zoom does. Hey, listen, we've run out of time here. Uh, we've run out of week, actually. We'll be back again on uh, Monday with the, uh, the pop-up show. And then on Wednesday with the uh, Ramble, this show. But then no more shows for the rest of that week. It's Thanksgiving, and we're taking it off, damn it. You know? Oh, the whole week? No, we're taking. We're going to be here Wednesday. We just won't be here Thursday oh, and Friday. Because I, I just sent you a thing that I need to get votes for, and I wanted to, I wanted to use your show to exploit it. Oh, really? Well, I'll look at Sarah, it. Sarah's hmm? doing her her Metallica show, and she finally they got it done. So I need to get votes for the U of O marching band. Oh, okay, all right. So I know that well, our all right. vast audience. Where do they do there. it? Where do they do it? Quick. I, I already did it. I sent you the link, but I can't send out the link and all the info right now because you're running out of time. Okay. And I can't do it. All fast right. Enough. Well, we'll mention it on, on Wednesday. Is that appropriate? Okay. It sounds good. Good. Anyway, thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. Thanks to Kevin. Thanks to Josh. Uh, thanks to Jeff. And thanks to Alan for a very spirited conversation. Everybody, give yourselves a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a wave goodbye at you. Okay. 
There they go, folks. Yes, sir. That's our show for tonight. Uh, Amy uh, is going to be in for Jack next at uh, the intersection. And you, you can, in that case, you can call uh, Gabnet, uh, what is it, Gabnet Live on Skype. Uh, meanwhile, I will see you again on Monday with the pop-up show and then Wednesday for the only show of next week right here at t- uh, 10.30 uh, Eastern Time? Yeah. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, you know, I always tell you, tell her I love her. Okay? Bye, everybody.